Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Good effort, Meg. Today, we are going to be doing something that I have been wanting to try for so long. <laughs> I have always wanted to try messing around with UV resin and I have seen a ton of people on the internet who make some really incredible crafts using UV resin or epoxy resin, but I specifically wanted to try UV resin just because I knew that you didn't have to mix parts and I wanted to make sure I had something that was smaller form so I could work on it in the apartment. I don't have a setup, so one of my favorite YouTubers to watch that do a ton of resin projects are Evan and Caitlin and by the way like if they ever saw this like holy cow <laughs> I want to be your best friends I don't know I think they're super cool <laughs> but one of the things that I super appreciate about their channel in particular is that they definitely take the proper safety precautions when working with resin and I very much appreciate that because in doing my research and if you yourself have ever been interested in working with resin you might also notice that not a ton of the people out there actually use the proper PPE for working with this medium and it is a chemical <laughs> so you have to be careful not to get it on your skin not to inhale any fumes make sure you have proper ventilation etc and that's just one of the things that I really appreciate about their channel in particular is they've essentially normalized it on their platform to wear the proper PPE so in particular today I want to put two of my hobbies together so I I want to craft and work with this new medium, see how I like it, and also incorporate some of my seashells. I also want to do it in the form of making keycaps for a keyboard. So I have always wanted to build my own keyboard and I'm not quite to the point where I'm ready to do that. And when I do get to that point, I will definitely make a video about it. But today we are starting simple. We are starting with keycaps. Caps. It is a low price entry point into the hobby, so I thought it was a great place to start to see if I like it. I'll be sure to leave a link down below for any of the products that I purchased for this. They're not affiliated or sponsored or anything like that. They were just the ones that, doing my research, they kind of hit a couple of wickets for me being low cost and had decent reviews. They weren't the best, but I just didn't want to drop a ton of money on something that I wasn't sure I was gonna like. So be sure to check those out if you're interested in starting this as well. So without further ado, let's get crafted. So for the supplies that I picked up for this particular project, I got this UV resin kit. It came with three bottles of clear UV resin, a UV light, some stirring sticks, some gloves, a little mixing pot, and I believe this is silicone, so it can be reused, a pouring spout for the bottles, some stirring sticks, and an instruction manual. One of the things I wanna be sure to highlight when you're working with resin, and again, this is my very first time working with any kind of resin, is to be sure to review the safety precautions on the box and make sure you do some research online to from an official source as well to get what exactly PPE you need. Next, I picked up some keycap molds and these should fit the keyboard that I have because I have cherry red switches on my keyboard. Next, because I thought it would be fun to potentially play around with this, is I picked up some mica powders, which again, I've seen some other folks use. And as you can see, I haven't opened it yet, but they're kind of these iridescent powder colors that you can add to liquids to make them cohesively that color. And lastly, because I thought it would be really fun to incorporate one of my favorite hobbies, into this. I grabbed some small seashells that we have. I've got some pieces of coral and some different types of seashells. And I know the kit came with some gloves. The gloves that it came with are these plastic gloves, which would be fine if I wasn't filming this. 
but I don't want the crackling in y'all's ears for however long this is going to take. I also am going to have the windows open to keep a path of ventilation and wear a mask for any fumes that'll come off of the resin. I removed the escape key from my keyboard using the provided keycap puller, but I just took the escape key and just tested out the different size molds and this is the one where it fit perfectly inside with no gaps and no extra bits sticking out. Oh. And I just went and grabbed some Q-tips because I just want to clean out any loose hair from my lovely fur babies. So I'm just going to be doing this one spot here first. And before I do anything with any of my seashells, I am going to just practice with a simple colored keycap. And this is my favorite color. And so I figured this would be a great one to start with. This is to first add a resin to our little measuring cup. I'm not really sure how much to add. So I think I'm gonna do a little bit more than I think I need and then adjust. Ooh, that's so vibrant, holy cow. And it came with this little spoon, so I'm not too sure how much to add. Let's just start with like a little bit. As you can tell, these gloves are like way too big for me. These are actually Anthony's. <laughs> Oh, that is so pretty. All right, now we are going to pour it into, sorry if it looks like I'm shaking it. I have a death grip on this thing. I'm so scared to drop it. Wow, I actually think I did a pretty good job there on protecting the amount. Okay, now we're going to put this base part on it. I'm gonna be very careful not to mess it up at this point, but I'm just gonna kind of like roll it on, I think. Okay, so we have quite a bit of overflow. I'm just gonna make sure to like lightly tap it down. And next we are going to, okay, so maybe I didn't estimate well. Now we're going to blast it with some UV light. Okay, so that was about 90 seconds. So let's see if that worked. I kinda wanna poke it first. Whoa. <laughs> well, it cured. So now let's demold it. Okay. It's so weird. So there's still some wet resin. So I might just blast it again. All right, let's see if we can demold it. I can already tell that I didn't put the bottom part on square, so you can tell it's a little bit off, which that's okay. That's why I wanted to just practice. Oh, that is so satisfying. Wow. I mean, honestly, it is not perfect, <laughs> but for a first try, I don't really see any bubbles. Like there's a few at the bottom there, you can see. And I think we might be able to just, oh, oh, it's not perfect at all. Okay, so I need to cure this longer. So glad I'm wearing gloves. So I am just gonna blast this thing one more time. And there could be a couple of different reasons why the resin isn't curing uh, in accordance with what the manual says. So this type of resin, I don't think normally gets used with mica powder. So it could take longer to cure with UV. And also just given the thickness of the resin, so there could be a couple of different factors, could be environmental, etc. But we will just adjust as necessary. 
but I think that color is absolutely gorgeous and I really <laughs> am excited to make more things. I'm trying to see if my glove is leaving any sort of imprint. Just again, I wanna make sure that it's fully cured before I touch it with my bare skin because resin can cause all sorts of skin irritation. It seems still a little tacky on the top. I'm just gonna give it a few more seconds and I think that'll do the trick. Oh yeah, definitely better. So here's <laughs> the grand reveal. I'm gonna touch it with my bare hands. Wow, wow. Oh, weird. It's like hot to the touch. Not like hot, but warm. Yeah, so you can see here how I definitely didn't place that <laughs> where it was supposed to be. So I'm gonna just clean this up and trim this off and I'll show you. So I just used these, I think these are like nail clippers or like cuticle clippers or something. I never use these. Uh, they were like really cheap and came in like some kit or whatever, <laughs> but I've seen people use something that looks very similar to this to trim off like edges of resin projects and that actually worked really well, but definitely recommend wearing safety glasses because the little pieces were kind of like flying all over the place. So that was a little freaky, but so that's what that key ended up looking like. I think I will go a little lighter on the mica powder. I absolutely love this color purple. I think it's super duper pretty, but I think because of the amount that I added, it was making it difficult for the resin to cure. So I'm gonna try a little bit less, make sure that the bottom part is squared up and also I think I took off the bottom too early because as you can see here, the base like filled in, like it was there, but yeah, it definitely filled in. So this wouldn't even sit on top of a, a switch if I wanted to. But yeah, I think for a first try, it's pretty good. So let's try another. So again, I'm just gonna do the same color purple and I'm probably just gonna use the residual purple that's still in the little mixing bowl and we'll see how the next one comes out. So this time I see a lot more bubbles. So I wanna try to let it set for a minute. It says you can let it set for a few seconds and I'm just tapping it. I don't know if this actually does anything but I made macarons once and I know this is how you get the bubbles out <laughs> before you bake the cookies. So, but I've also seen you can use a lighter. So I'm gonna go get a lighter. Whoa. Actually did a pretty good job. I just hit it one more time. And now I'm going to there's still bubbles coming up. Maybe I should just let it sit for a second. I think that's what I might do. Now we're going to cure it. Okay, so again, same problem there. You can see, and I squished it while it was in the mold to make sure it was fully cured. And it seems solid, but see right there in the center where that cross is? or that plus sign, I'm still having issues with that getting filled in. So it's not going to sit on the keyboard properly. So let's go ahead and demold this. Otherwise it looks much better or more centered. Still a gorgeous color. And I think in terms of having light pass through it, I think that's gonna look a lot better than the first try, but very, very pretty. I also, I cured it from the bottom first for 90 seconds, and then I actually ended up flipping the mold over and doing another 90 seconds, and I definitely think 
that helped because yeah, my fingernails aren't leaving any ridges. So I think it's fully cured this time. But again, I'm just gonna clean this up. Oh yeah. So now we can see the side by side. So this is the first one that we did. Much deeper in color. Still very beautiful. And I love like kind of the iridescent effect that the mica, mica powder gives. Very, very pretty. And this one's much lighter, almost like a gem or like a candy. But you can see here I had a few bubbles, but not too upset with that because they're all on the inside. No bubbles that I can tell from the outside, the part that you would you know, want to prevent the bubbles. So other than that center post bit, I'm really happy with the way the second one came out. So I think we just have to iron it out and troubleshoot why that center post is getting filled in. So for this one, I think what I'm going to do is no mica powder. So let's get rid of you know, one of the variables here. And I am just going to fill this up just directly in here. This might be a bad idea, but we will see. And we wanna pour very slowly. I think that should be enough. And then I am going to add a little bit of resin, I think here. I wanna make sure that that's getting in there because that's what I suspect is happening is that the resin is just sitting right on top. So I'm gonna use this tool here and just push it down in there. Just a little bit more because again, I'd rather have more than not enough. I think that's gonna be plenty right there. And flip and flop it on. And now we gotta get it straight. Okay, so let's see how this one turned out. It's plenty cured. Just try to be very careful. Oh, so close. Okay, I think we're on to something. Oh, okay. Let me finish getting this out and I'll show you all. So first off, <laughs> this resin is incredibly clear. Like, holy cow, that is beautiful. And there's almost no bubbles in it at all. So I'm glad I did a perfectly clear one so you can see just how nice this looks. The only thing I wish I could figure out is how to make the bottom clear where the base comes in contact. But again, that might just be from my oils on my hands or something. So I might just have to figure out how to clean that better. So I got it all nice and cleaned up. And you can see now we were definitely on the right track. So I would say about a third of the post is there. So I definitely think pouring some into the top and using this little stick to kind of work it down in there is the right idea. I think maybe I didn't have enough or possibly just didn't give it time to work its way down into the crevices, but that's definitely what needs to happen. So let's give it another shot. Now, since I think we have a semi-technique down, I'm gonna go back to adding some mica powder for fun. And this time I'm doing a color called French Rose, just because I thought it was a gorgeous color. <laughs> so just like before, I'm going to add our resin into our little mixing bowl. And while that is settling, I'm gonna go ahead and add the resin to the top here, just like a little dollop. See if that'll work its way down on its own. And if it doesn't, then I will kind of coax it, which I think I'm going to have to do. And I don't think it matters if the post is like a particular color or if it's clear. I'm just gonna let that work its way in there. Hopefully gravity will do its thing, but make adjustments if needed. I'm going to take my little scoop here, grab a little bit less than I did of the purple the first go around. 
had that. Grab my super scientific stirring stick. Gosh, I love how vibrant these colors are. Holy cow. Like, I hope they're coming across as vibrant on camera as they are in real life. To get the mold, trying to pour slowly so not to cause bubbling. That's good. Set that to the side and come back to our base. And I do see a big old bubble is formed. So I'm gonna try to pop that. And lastly, I'm gonna see if I can just tap it. Definitely like looks like it's in there. Like you can see there's a few bubbles, but like very, very small ones, but otherwise it looks like it's, it's down in there. So I am going to hit this with a lighter. Here we go. That's so satisfying. Put my glove back on. And then I'm going to put this on here. Okay. So let's see how this guy turned out. Oh, hopefully that's a good sign. <gasps> Yay! There's a fully intact host, you guys. I didn't add enough resin, which I was afraid of because it wasn't spilling out quite like the others. So it's a little uneven on the side. Otherwise, that's an easy fix. And that was the most important thing to me. It's a little off center again, but this is what I wanted to figure out on this last trial, is how to get that post. And I think that that was the key, is adding our resin to the bottom, letting it sit for a few minutes, letting gravity do its thing while we're working on this piece here, and then making sure that there weren't any air bubbles and pressing it down into the piece. And there you have it. <laughs> Again, other than this flaw here, I am very happy with the way that this came out. And let's see if it fits on my keyboard. I think that looks so cool. And actually the side that got messed up is on the side farthest. So you can't even tell it's messed up. <laughs> but I think that's really cool. And especially with the lights coming through, I don't normally have it on rainbow mode like this. So um, I think with the color scheme that I typically have, that's gonna look really, really cool. Y'all, so it is a new day. I went to the store and got myself some gloves that actually fit. It was really difficult working with those other gloves, but I didn't want to not work with gloves, so here I am with gloves that actually fit. I also picked up some popsicle sticks and I just got these things from my Walmart. <laughs> so I think before I use any of my seashells, the very first thing I want to try to do is see if I can create a gradient because I would want my top layer to be clear so I can set my seashell in it, partially cure it, and then mix up a color and pour that on top. So that's kind of the order I'm thinking. So I am just gonna try that, I think, just to see what that would potentially look like. And I'm just gonna use a practice seashell. So probably one that I'm not terribly worried. We find a ton of scallops. So I am going to practice with this one and I'm going to put it face down so the pretty side will be facing up. I don't know if I should go ahead and pour this on top or try it at different points. Because hmm. I don't want it to have like a super obvious line. So I think for the sake of science, I am just going to pour the colored resin on top hope that doesn't completely cover up. I definitely used too much mica powder, I think. I wanted it to be a bit more translucent. That's okay. Now I see a bubble. 
A moment of truth. Okay, so let's see what this ended up looking like. Okay, we have a really nice stem. Very happy with that. Oh, whoa. Wow, that turned out so much better than I thought. That is so cool. I think I want a little less of the blue. So like, I really was hoping the blue would only fill up here to here and then down. I mean, it makes sense, but I love the way it looks like, like it's resting. That is so pretty. That is really cool. <laughs> now I'm just thinking, I'm wondering if there would be a way to like get white in there somewhere. So it almost looks like it's like waves splashing up on it. I think also I had almost the perfect amount of resin because it overflowed just a little bit, but not nearly as bad as in my other pores. Oh, <laughs> I actually take that back. I had it a little bit too, didn't have quite enough, but again, it's on the wrong side. So I don't know, can y'all see this edge right here? Didn't quite fill all the way up, but other than that, that is really, really pretty. You can see the stem. There are a few bubbles in the bottom there, but I'm not concerned about those in the least. So I see three small bubbles, maybe four on the scallop edge, but it's not super obvious. So I would call for a trial run with a seashell keycap. That's a win for me. Okay, so I was definitely happy with that one. So I wanna try a second one, and this time we're gonna use this Gotti Nautica. So I think this one is going to be way too big to fit into a keycap, even though I love it because it has a little bit of that Paul Newman eye. So we're gonna try this one. It's a bit smaller, and I am gonna make a not like matching, but a sister set for either my keyboard or so that way Anthony can have one on his keyboard as well. So I'm just gonna do the same thing, but probably add a little bit more clear. And again, we want the pretty side up and I want it relatively centered. Try it any. Just wanna make sure. Okay, so it's touching the bottom. So that's good. I just want to move it over to my right ever so slightly. There. Perfect. Add some more clear resin. And I'm going to mix this prior to adding any more mica powder because I'm curious if there's already enough there. Because we kind of did that with the purple one last time. Oh, also, if you end up getting the same set, that I'm using here. This blue color is the Maya blue. So that's what I'm using. It's like this really pretty sky blue almost, but it's it's like pearlescent. See, I think I want a little bit more blue. So I'm adding like the tiniest of it. <laughs> and I'm intentionally stirring slow because I don't want to add any air bubbles if I can at all avoid it. Like, I don't think it's possible to completely avoid it, but I am just doing my best to not make it worse. <laughs> okay. I want to, before I do that, I want to make sure that I have my bottom. Okay, so I've got my stem all taken care of. So again, we're just gonna pour the blue right on top and I'm gonna pour it on the back of the seashell so that way it doesn't like sink. Oh, well, <laughs> oh no. Well, we're committed now. Let's see what happens. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna put my the base on. Definitely added more this time. That is okay. That is why we work on a craft mat. Okay, so let's 
see how this one turned out. Also, I'm in a very <laughs> awkward position because Penny is laying in my lap, so my legs are facing completely opposite to my desk right now. This came out, and I don't know if I said this before, but it's not hard to uh, peel this back, but and I'm just trying to be gentle so I don't break the post because I think after curing with the lamp, it could still take some time before it's fully cured. <gasps> so pretty. Oh my gosh, that is so pretty. I was so worried when I was pouring in the blue that it went over the spiral, but honestly it ended up perfect because it actually ended up covering up that drill hole. Wow, I love that. All right, I'm gonna clean up the edges. And there it is, all cleaned up. That is so pretty. Here's the scallop next to it. So you can see the difference in the quantity of the mica powder. So it's still very, very vibrant. It's almost like it just has a bit of a softer pearlescent, but I'm very happy with both of these. Like extremely happy. <laughs> So I am incredibly happy with the way that these keycaps came out. I think they are absolutely gorgeous. I really enjoyed the process and the trial and error of trying to figure out how to get these to come out exactly how I pictured it in my head. And I am very excited to make a full set of keycaps and I might do a separate video just doing that but I at least wanted to capture you know my first dive in of <laughs> messing around with UV resin so that way if you were starting you could see where I messed up and tinker around yourself and maybe I can save you some time with troubleshooting. <laughs> Like, it's pretty incredible to see how my very first <laughs> keycap that I made where I added way too much pigment, my base was not even close to centered, there was zero stem to my last one, which I was able to do a gradient, I was able to add a seashell, it's not perfectly centered, but much better. And it has a beautiful seashell in it. And that was just a couple of tweaks to get myself to that point. So I definitely would recommend this hobby. Make sure you protect yourself and take the proper precautions. But as far as a versatile medium that you could do a ton of different crafts like already I'm thinking of a million and one different things that I want to make using UV resin <laughs> I could see how easily it would get expensive and probably run out of space so I will have to pace myself but I really really enjoyed this so if you're on the fence about trying it I would recommend it so, well, if you guys enjoy this type of content and more, be sure to go check out the other videos on my channel. And I hope y'all are having a wonderful day or evening wherever y'all are. And I will see y'all in the next video.